Welcome fellow bookworms to Tibra's Den. My name is Whitney and today we are going to be talking about the ABC Challenge book edition. So I did recently complete the author edition. <laughs> Boo boo. I've been gone all day so they're very clingy right now. Um, but I did recently complete the author edition that I did. I kind of have my own rules. If you're interested, those are linked down below. But basically there is also a thrifting component to this. So I go to the thrift store and I try to find, you know, when I did the author, the last name of the author for each letter of the alphabet. Some of them I couldn't find, so I did the first letter. Uh, and then recently I was at the thrift store and I decided, you know, I wanted to do this in 2024. So I started looking. I've also thrifted a lot of books this year, so I decided instead of thrifting a lot more, I'm going to look through the books I've already thrifted and see what could fit the different letters. There is a rule that I have for this challenge that says it needs to be a new author to me. I did deviate from that a little bit. There's a couple that I have read from the author before, but only like one book. So I'm not very familiar with the author. Uh, and so I'm going to tweak it a little bit just to suit my needs because I had these books. And well, one I had and then the others I found at the thrift store. Um, and the one I had, I did find at the thrift store as well. So there's still that thrifting component there. But I just knew, you know, I wanted to make it a little bit easier on myself. And these authors, like one I didn't like, which I'm going to talk about very shortly. And the other two are very, very, one I tried a while ago. I had just a random book by them and I tried it. And then the other one I tried recently and both the books I had from that author I found at a thrift store. Um, and so I thought, you know, since this works for this letter, and it was honestly the only book I already had, I definitely could have found one at the thrift store as well. So there is a thrifting component and I am stretching the rules just a little bit authors that are unfamiliar to me. So even though some of these I have tried before, they're still unfamiliar so it still kind of fits within what I'm trying to accomplish. And so yeah, I have the complete set. I finally got the last. I still needed Q, U, X, Y, and Z. Of course, all the hardest letters. And so I went to the used bookstore today and just looked and I was able to find something. Um, not necessarily ones I would have picked up on my own, which again is the whole point of me doing this challenge, is to try something new. So uh, let's go ahead and jump in. I am wanting to complete this challenge within a year so I have broken it down there's some months I'm going to be reading three books most months I'm going to be reading two books and I'm trying to do it before December because I always do book miss in December and so I'm unwrapping and reading a book for every day and so I don't want to have those extra books for book miss and so let's go ahead and start with the letter A. So this is one that I did find at a thrift store. This is an author I read from once before. I didn't particularly like the book I read. Um, and I know people are probably going to come at me. But that is Sarah J. Mass. I read the first book in the Akatar series. And I just wasn't a huge fan. I found that one at a thrift store as well. And so I was like, you know what? I'll go ahead and try her. Wasn't a huge fan. I didn't hate it by any means, but it wasn't like, oh, I want to run out and try more from this author. But I did see this at a thrift store, and so I went ahead and picked this up. And I believe this is the um, prequel to the Throne of Glass series. So, uh, and I know some people say you should start with this. Some people say you should start with Throne of Glass. But I'm going to go ahead and start with this because this is the one that I found at the thrift store, and this is the one I have. And so yeah, The Assassin's Blade for A, and basically it says, Selena Sardothian is her kingdom's most feared assassin. Though she works for powerful assassin's guild, she yields to no one and trusts only her fellow killer for hire, Sam. When Selena's scheming master, Arobin Hamill, dispatches her on missions that take her from remote islands to hostile deserts, she finds herself acting independently of his wishes and questioning her own allegiance. She will have to risk it all if she hopes to escape Arobin's clutches, and if she fails, she'll lose not just a chance at freedom, but her life. So, a prequel to The Throne of Glass, this collection of five novellas offers readers a deeper look into the history of this cunning assassin and her enthralling and deadly world. They do hope I'm a bigger fan of this than I was of Akatar, but we shall see. So that's going to be the first book that goes on the ABC 
challenge. So next is one that I just found at the thrift store and it's one that I'm very interested in and that's called Blood and Chocolate by Annette Curtis Klaus. Uh, or Klaus. And so yeah, I'm excited for this one. This is a werewolf one. So it says, Vivian Gandillon relishes the change, the sweet, fierce ache that carries her from girl to wolf. At 16, she is beautiful and strong, and all the young wolves are on her tail. But Vivian still grieves for her dead father. Her pack remains leaderless and in disarray, and she feels lost in the suburbs of Maryland. She longs for a normal life. But what is normal for a werewolf? Then Vivian falls in love with a human, a meat boy. Aiden is kind and gentle, a welcome relief from the squabbling pack. He's fascinated by magic and Vivian longs to reveal herself to him. Surely he would understand her and delight in the wonder of her dual nature, not fear her as an ordinary human would. Vivian's divided loyalties are strained further when a brutal murder threatens to expose the pack. Moving between two worlds, she does not seem to belong in either. What is she really, human or beast? Which tastes sweeter, blood or chocolate? So, I'm excited for this one. I like that cover. So there's that. Then for C, I found this one. It's called Cassidy, which I actually have a cousin, Cassidy. And this is by Lori Wick. And this is the first one in the Big Sky Dreams series. So this is historical fiction, which I do typically enjoy. It says Montana Territory, 1880. A seamstress by trade, Cassie Norton makes her living sewing for folks of Token Creek. Amid the bustle of this busy frontier town, her life is rich. With what time her growing business doesn't take, her friends and family, her church family, fill. But Cassie hasn't always lived in Token Creek, and few people know anything about her family or past. As Cassie struggles with the nagging unsettledness in her heart, she must decide whether or not to share with the people who have become so dear to her. Will Cassidy find the strength to take that risk, or will her own dreams come true? So it sounds like this is also probably a little bit of Christian fiction as well, but I saw the cover and I loved it, and then with my cousin me named Cassidy, I was like, I gotta pick that one up. So those three I plan on reading in January. The next three I'm gonna try to read in February. And the first one is one I did hear of, um, but it wasn't fully on my radar, and that is Dorothy Must Die by Danielle Page. Uh, and so I have heard of this one before, and when I saw it, I thought, you know, I might like that one, so I'm gonna pick it up for my D. So it says, I didn't ask for any of this. I didn't ask to be some kind of hero. But when your whole life gets swept up by a tornado taking you with it, you have no choice but to go along, you know? Sure, I've read the books. I've seen the movies. But I never expected Oz to look like this, a place where good witches can't be trusted and wicked witches just might be the good guys. A place where even the road of yellow brick is crumbling. What happened? Dorothy. My name is Amy Gum, and I'm the other girl from Kansas. I've been recruited by the Revolutionary Order of the Wicked, and I've been given a mission. Remove the tin man, the tin woodman's heart, steal the scarecrow's brain, take the lion's courage, and then Dorothy must die. So this sounds like a really interesting take on the Wizard of Oz, so I'm hoping I enjoy it. Then we have... E, and I have read from this author before. Um, my husband, for I think it was two Christmases ago, got me, I did a 24 day of book miss, or 25, I think I did, and he got me a bunch of books, and one of those books was by this author, and that's Pam Munoz Ryan, and this one's called Echo. Um, and so yeah, again, not an author I'm very familiar with. I read the one book, did enjoy it, uh, very young, it was like middle grade, but I did have a good time with it. So in this one, it says, Lost and alone in a forbidden forest, Otto meets three mysterious sisters and suddenly finds himself entwined in a puzzling quest involving a prophecy, a promise, and a harmonica. Decades later, Frederick in Germany, Germany, Mike in Pennsylvania, and Ivy in California each in turn become interwoven when the very same harmonica lands in their lives. All the children face daunting challenges, rescuing a father, protecting a brother, holding a family together, and ultimately pulled by an invisible thread of destiny, destiny the suspenseful, their suspenseful solo stories converge in an orchestral crescendo. So, yeah, 
I'm very interested to see what I think of this one. Um, I do think it looks interesting and it does kind of sound interesting. I'm just not really sure the synopsis doesn't give you a whole lot. So it'll be interesting to see how it plays out. So then the third one I want to read in fem February is this one, which I found at the thrift store. And it's The Family Across the Street by Nicole Trope. Uh, and yeah, I saw this and I thought well, that could be interesting. So it says, sometimes the most perfect families are hiding the most terrible secrets. How well do you know the people next door? Everybody wants to live on Hogarth Street, the pretty tree-lined avenue with its white houses. The new family, the West, are a perfect fit. Catherine and John seem so in love, and their gorgeous five-year-old twins race screeching around their beautiful emerald green lawn. But soon people start to notice, why don't they join backyard barbecues? Why do they brush away offers to babysit? Why, when you knock at the door, do they shut you out rather than inviting you in? Every family has secrets, and on the hottest day of the year, the truth is about to come out as a tragedy unfolds behind closed doors. The dawn chorus is split by a wail of sirens, and one by one, the families who tried so hard to welcome the West begin to realize Hogarth Street will never be the same again. So, yeah, that should be interesting. Then this one... Um, is one that I picked up a while ago at a thrift store, and it's just never really one that I'm gravitating to, but it did look interesting when I found it at the thrift store. And so this is for my G, I'm going with Going Local by Jamie Harrison, uh, and again, found this at a thrift store, but a very long time, and I'm going to try to read this one and H in March. So this one says Jamie Harrison's first novel, The Edge of the Crazies, gained her many devoted readers and raved reviews. Now in Going Local, her lively and hilarious cast of characters from Blue Deer, Montana is back, featuring Jules Clement, the conscious and unlikely protector of the local populace. The novel begins as Blue Deer inhabitants are gearing up for the annual 4th of July rodeo, with, uh, with out-of-towners descending upon the town in a kind of berserk westward ho. As Jules helps the hapless bar owners and other local merchants gear up for the onslaught, shocking murder is discovered. That of a well-known environmental lawyer who, while camping out with his young lover, was run over by a truck and dumped into a lake still wrapped up in his tent. As Jules begins to investigate the murder, he uncovers a suspicious land development deal involving the dead lawyer and many others, including Hugh, a suave British director who's planning a movie that threatens to bring all of Blue Deer to a complete stop. Sylvia, the dead lawyer's ex, who's having an affair with Hugh, Everett, a local boy who left town and made good, and Diane, a sexy blonde whose dubious charms Jules succumbs. She's like a mob car. You get in and all the locks go down. As if the impending movie shoot isn't bad enough, the annual rodeo threatens to drive everyone in town batty. Tempers flare as out-of-towners try to be cowboys as true locals attempt ridiculous hero heroics and multiple murders ignite the town in the midst of amorous goings-on. Jules is as charming as ever, and readers who enjoyed the hijinks in Jamie Harrison's first novel will love going local. So, it just sounds like a very fun, light read. So, I'm excited to try that one out. Then, for H, we have How Hard Can It Be by Allison Pearson. Again, another one I got a while ago at the thrift store, but since I had it, I thought it would work. And this one says, Katie Reddy had it all, a nice home, two adorable kids, a good husband. Then her kids became teenagers, read monsters. Richard, her husband, quit his job in favor of bicycling and therapy, dressing head to toe in Lycra, drinking green potions and spending his time and their money on his own counseling. Since Richard no longer sees a, reg sees a regular income as part of the path to enlightenment, it's left to Katie or Kate to go back to work. Companies aren't necessarily keen on hiring 49-year-old mothers, so Kate does what she must. Knocks a few years off her age, hires a trainer, joins a women returners group, and prepares a new resume that has a shot at a literary prize for experimental, experimental fiction. <laughs> when Kate that manages to secure a job at the very hedge fund she founded, she is thrown into an impossible juggling act, proving herself again at work dealing with teen drama and trying to look after increasingly frail parents as the clock keeps, keeps ticking towards her fifth 
50th birthday. Then an old flame shows up out of the blue and Kate finds herself facing off with everyone from Russian mobsters to a literal stallion. Surely it will all work out in the end. After all, how hard can it be? So again, something that just sounds funny and light. Um, so should be good reads for March, that's for sure. Then, let's see here. In April, I'm going to try to read three um, because this one is short, so I thought I could add on two more. So for I am going with I Was Amelia Earhart by Jane Mendelssohn, another one I got a while ago and it's just been sitting on the shelf. So in this bril brilliantly imagined novel, Amelia Earhart tells us what happened after she and her navigator, friend Noonan, disappeared off the coast of New Guinea one glorious windy day in 1937, as she tells us about herself. There is her love affair with flying. The sky is flesh. There are mem her memories of the past. Her childhood desires to become a her heroine. Heroines, they did whatever they wanted. Her marriage to G.P. Putnam, who promoted her to fame but was willing to gamble her life so that the book she was writing about her round-the-world flight would sell out before Christmas. There is a flight itself, day after magnificent or perilous or exhilarating or terrifying day. Noonan once said, any fool could have seen I was risking my life but not living it. And there is miraculously an island we named it Heaven as a kind of joke. And most important, there is Noonan. So, so yeah, I'm excited to see what this is. So that should be a good time. Then the next one is Jay, and this is the one I got both, I got two books from her at the thrift store. I recently read the first one um, as part of the Bible, or Journey Through the Bible readathon that Katie at, at Paperbacks and Ponytails puts on. Uh, I really enjoyed that one. And so, yeah, again, another author I'm not very familiar with, but I had this one and this fit for Jay. This is the only one I had for Jay without going and trying to find something else. So this is Jewel of the Nile by Tessa Afshar. Uh, and so this one, it's, the other one was biblical fiction, so I'm assuming this one is, um, and in the very least, it's Christian fiction. So it says, raised as an orphan by her aunt, Charlene, Charlene has only been told a few pieces of her parents' tragic love story. Her beautiful dark skin is proof that her father was a Cushite, but she knows nothing else. By visiting her grandfather, Charlene overhears that her father is still alive and discovering his identity becomes her obsession. Both her grandfather and the queen forbid her quest. However, so when her only clues lead to Rome, Charlene sneaks on the ship of a merchant trusted by friends. Theo is shocked to discover a stowaway on board his vessel, but drawn in by Charlene's story, he feels honor bound to see her safely to shore, especially when it appears someone may be willing to kill for the truth she seeks. In this transformative tale of historical fiction, best selling author Tessa Afshar brings to life the kingdom of Kush and the Roman Empire, introducing readers to a fascinating first century world filled with gripping adventure, touching romance, and a host of lovable characters. So. Yeah, I'm excited to read the author for a second time for sure. Then the next one for Kay is Kindred by Octavia E. Butler. This is one that has been on my radar. It's one I, I'm interested in trying this author, but not so interested that I wanted to go and, and buy any of the books full price. So I actually found this one, and then when I went to the next thrift store, I found another copy, which I actually liked that copy better, but I had already picked this one up, so I was like, oh well. Uh, so yeah, I'm really, really excited. And this was the book, Kindred was the book I was most interested in trying from this author. So it says, Dana, a modern black woman is celebrating her 26th birthday with her new husband when she is snatched abruptly, abruptly from her home in California and transported to the antebellum south. Rufus, the white son of a plantation owner, is drowning, and Dana has been summoned across the years to save him. After this first summons, Dana is drawn back again and again to the plantation to protect Rufus and ensure that he will grow to manhood and father the daughter who will become Dana's ancestor. Yet each time, the stay grows longer and more dangerous, until it is uncertain whether or not Dana's life will end long before it has even begun. So I'm really excited to read this like when I found it I was like perfect 
Then for, let's see, that was April. So for May, I'm going to be reading two books. And the first one is another one. This one was at the thrift store for a long time. Every time I went, I would look at it and I thought, no, not really interested. But then when I go, it still be there and I look at it again. And so I finally picked it up a couple of months ago. And that's Lap Bona by Atessa Mashbe. I might be mispronouncing that so I'm so sorry uh and so yeah this one I'm not sure if I'm gonna enjoy it but it kept drawing my attention so it says little Marek the abused and delusional son of the village shepherd never knew his mother his father told him she died in childbirth one of Marek's few consolation is his enduring bond with the blind village midwife Ina, who suckled him when he was a baby, as she did many of the village's children. Ina's gifts extend beyond child care. For some people, her ability to receive transmission of sacred knowledge from the natural world is a godsend. For other, Ina's home in the woods outside the village is a place to fear and to avoid, a godless place. Among the villagers is Father Barnabas, the town priest and lackey for the depraved lord and governor Willem whose hilltop manor contains a secret embarrassment of riches. The people's desperate need to believe that there are powers that be who have their best interests at heart is put to a cruel test by Willem and the priests, especially in this year of record drought and famine. But then, when fate brings Marek into violent proximity of the Lord's family, new and occult forces arise to upset the old order. By the year's end, the veil between blindness and sight, life and death, and the natural world and the spirit world will prove to be very thin indeed. So, sounds like it could be weird. <laughs> so I'm either going to love it or it's not going to be for me, but I'm excited to at least try it. Because like I said, every time I went, I kept looking at it. And I finally just picked it up. So there is that one. Then the other one for May that I'm going to be reading is The Mermaid by Christina Henry. Um, and I am really excited to try this. Sounds like something I would absolutely love. So it says, from the author of The Lost Boy comes a beautiful historical fairy tale about a mermaid who leaves the sea only to become the star attraction of his history's greatest showman. Once there was a mermaid called Amelia who could never be content in the sea, a mermaid who longed to know all the world and all its wonders, and so she came to live on land. Once there was a ma man called P.T. Barnum, a man who longed to make his fortune by selling the wondrous and the miraculous, and there is nothing more miraculous than a real mermaid. Amelia agrees to play the mermaid for Barnum and walk among the men in their, wor in their world believing she can leave anytime she likes. But Barnum has never given up a money-making scheme in his life, and he is determined to hold on to his mermaid. So I can't wait to give this a try. That's going to be a fun one. And I'm pretty sure it's right up my alley, so I'm pretty sure I'm going to really enjoy it. Then let's see here. So in June, I'm also going to read two books. The first one is William Gibson, Neuromancer. Um, and I was reading kind of some reviews and such, and I have heard mixed things, but this is definitely outside my comfort zone, but I am excited to give it a try. This is the 20th anniversary edition. So it says, um, 20 years ago, it was as if someone turned a light on. The future blazed into existence with each deliberate word that William Gibson laid down. Neurorancer didn't just explode onto the science fiction scene. It permeated into our consciousness, our culture, our science, and our technology. The winner of the Hugo, Nebula, and Philip K. Dick Awards, Neuromancer showed us that we were capable of creating and what we were capable of destroying, and it illuminated the dark corners of the path we were headed down. Today, we have the science fiction masterpiece to thank for the term cyberpunk, for easing our way into the information age and internet society. Neuromancer's virtual reality has become our own, and yet William Gibson's gritty, sophisticated vision still manages to inspire the minds that will take us even further into the future. So I am not a big sci-fi reader and definitely not cyberpunk, so this is going to be very outside my comfort zone, but I am excited to try it, so hopefully it's really interesting and I really enjoy it. 
Then the other one I am going to be reading in June is my O book. And this is 1,000 White Wom Women, The Journals of May Dodd by Jim Fergus. So um, this is one I, I picked up the other day. So I'm really excited for this one. This does seem right up my alley. So I seem to have a nice mix, I think, of books that are going to be kind of outside my comfort zone and books that I should really enjoy as well. So 1,000 White Women begins with May Dodd's journey west into the unknown. Yet the unknown is far better fate than the life she left behind. Committed to an insane asylum by her blue blood family for the crime of loving a man beneath her station, May finds that her only hope of freedom is to participate in a secret government program whereby white women from the civilized world become the brides of Cheyenne warriors. What follows is the story of May's breathtaking adventures, her brief passionate romance with the gallant young army captain John Burke, her marriage to the great chief Little Wolf, and her conflict of being caught between two worlds, loving two men, two men living two lives. So vividly has Jim Fergus depicted the American West that made Dodge journals are like a capsule in time. So I think this might be one of the ones I enjoy the most. But you never know. I've never read this author, so it could be a flop. But I'm really excited for that one. Then in June, uh, or that was June, July, I'm going to read two books as well. So for my P book, I had found this the other day. This is The Paper Daughters of Chinatown by Heather B. Moore. And this is based on a true story. This one is kind of middle road. I do tend to enjoy these types of books, uh, but it is, they're not books I gravitate to a lot just because they tend to be a little bit heavier reads, um, but when I do pick them up, I do tend to really enjoy these types of books. So it says, in the late 19th century, San Francisco is a booming city with a dark side, one in which a powerful underground organization, the Criminal Tong, buys and sells young Chinese women into prostitution and slavery. These paper daughters, so-called because fake documents gain them entry to America, but leave them without legal identity, generally have no recourse. But the... Occidental Mission Home for Girls is one bright spot of hope and help. Told in alternating chapters, this rich narrative follows the stories of young Donald 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 Nina Dina Donald Dina Cameron, who works in the mission home, and Maylene, a paper daughter who thinks she is coming to America for arranged marriage, but instead is sold into a life of shame and despair. Donald Dina is a real-life pioneering advocate for social justice, bravely stands up to the corrupt officials and violent gangs, helping to win freedom for thousands of Chinese women. Maylene endures heartbreak and betrayal in search for hope, belonging, and love. Their stories merge in this gripping account of the courage and determination that helped shape a new course of women's history in America. So, really excited for that one, too. Then let's see here for my Q1. This is the one I got today, actually. Um, and so I found this one, and it's The Queen's Lady by Shannon Drake. Uh, and so this is a romance, which I'm fine with romance. So it says Lady Gwyneth MacLeod has staked her fortune and reputation to help Mary, Queen of Scots, take her rightful place on the throne. But her struggle to guide the reckless, defiant queen has put her at perilous odds with Rowan Graham, a lord dangerously accomplished in both passion and affairs of the state. And the more Gwyneth challenges his intentions, the less he can resist the desire igniting between them. Now with her country in turmoil and treachery shadowing her every step, will Gwyneth's last daring gamble lead her to the ultimate betrayal or a destiny greater than she could ever imagine? So... Nice little change up from all the other books that I have. Then in August, I'm going to be reading two books. So my R and S book. This is another one I found a while ago at my local thrift store. So this isn't like, this is more of like a, probably like a self-published type book. And it's Write Em As They Come by Rusty Tolk. The Life of Jen Rusty Tolk, 1886 to 1977. Uh, and this is one, again, I think it would just keep sitting here. It has some pictures in it. That's fun. 
Um, it probably just keeps sitting there. So it's perfect to add it for this challenge so I could actually get it read. So hijinks and hardship of cowboy life a century ago come alive in Rusty Tolk's autobiographical story set in New Mexico, Arizona, and Oklahoma. Rock Bunce busting skills led him along with friend Pecos Higgins to Wild West shows throughout the East, beginning with Miller Brothers 101 Ranch Wild West show at the Jamestown Exposition in 1907. There were summer-long shows in Brighton Beach and special appearance at New York City's Polo Grounds and a memorable performance in England for the King and Queen. Tom Mix, Will Rogers, B. Ho Gray, Glay McGonagall, and Bill Pickett were ordinary cowboys when Rusty worked alongside them. Rusty's yarn spinning skills paint a picture of cowboy life as it really was before Hollywood's romanticized version. History comes alive with as his stories range from tragedy to belly laugh. A cowboy dies when bitten by a rabbit skunk. Reactions of Rusty and Pecos when they saw their first movie. The stories are true and weave the reader into a lifestyle gone forever. As a young man, he participated in the second annual Calgary Stampede. Wild West shows joined with old-time traveling circuses, and Rusty traveled the eastern seaboard to the Florida Keys, meeting people unlike those out west. Throughout it all, he retains his a sense of humor, adventure, and love. So, that one should be something I really, really enjoy because I like, you know, Wild West, cowboys, and all that. So... Then, let's see here, so we have my S for August. I'm going to be reading The Stories of Eva Luna by Isabel Allende. This one I have read one series, but it was her YA series, um, The Eagle and the Jaguar or whatever stories, memories of The Eagle and the Jaguar, and I really did enjoy those books. This will be my first time reading an adult novel by this author. Uh, and so again, an author I've definitely heard of and I have read from before, but I'm not overly familiar with her. I have one other book um, that I got at a thrift store as well, but I haven't read it yet. So I'm excited to give this one a try. It says, Eva Luna is a young woman woman whose powers as a storyteller bring her friendship and love. Lying in bed with her European lover, refugee and journalist Rolf Carl, Carl Eva answers his request for a story you have never told anyone before. With these 23 samples of her vibrant artistry interweaving the real and the magical, she explores love, vengeance, compassion, and the strengths of women, creating a world that is at once poignantly familiar and intriguingly new. Rendered in her sumptuously imagined, uniquely magical style, the stories of Eva Luna is the cornerstone of Alien Day's work. This treasure trove of brilliant brilliantly crafted stories is a superb example of a writer working at the height of her powers so it sounds like it might be like like little short stories as well so yeah we'll give that a try and then for september i'm going to be reading two books um this one is <laughs> completely out there but I saw it and I was like you know what I've been trying to get in manga more so far I've only read the Death Note part of the Death Note series I'm about halfway through the Death Note series and so I saw this one and it looked kind of silly and so it's Toilet Bound Hanako Kun and it's by Ada Iro I want to say is how you pronounce that um, and yeah, it just seems kind of silly, and this is the first book. I found this at the thrift store the other day. So it says, at Kon Komomi Academy, rumors abound about the school's seven mystery, one of which is Hanako-san, said to occupy the third stall of the third floor girls' bathroom in the old school building. Hanako-san grants any wish when summoned. Nini Yashiro, an occult-loving high school girl who dreams of romance, ventures into this haunted bathroom, but when Hanako-san meets, but the Hanako-san she meets there is nothing like she imagined. Komomi Academy's Hanako-san is a boy, so we'll see. It, 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 it seems silly, but it seems fun at the same time. Um, and so yeah, we'll try that. And then the you that I found today, I had such a hard time. I found another you um, book, but it was like a cozy mystery type. And those just aren't my favorite. 
and it didn't sound like something I would enjoy. So I kept looking, and I had found a couple others, but like they were farther along in the series. And so I finally found this one, and this is another author I read like one book from them. And I did enjoy it, but I'm not very familiar with this author. So it's called Unspoken, and it's by Lisa Jackson. It says, The more you know, the envelope delivered to Shelby Cole's Seattle home contains no a return address, just a photograph of a little girl. Shelby knows at once that this is the daughter she was told died at birth. And in that moment, Shelby knows something else. She needs to go back to bad luck, Texas. The more you tell. She's not the only one coming home. A long ago killing is in the news again, following a recanted testimony. A violent nightmare from Shelby's past has been set free, and she can't shake the suspicion that someone is baiting her, luring her back here for their own ends. The more there is to fear. Shelby's search for answers is met with stonewall stonewalling and hostility. Her only ally is a figure from her past, someone she has every reason not to trust, and in the midst of a dark family revelations, she uncovers a terrifying scheme of revenge because some secrets, once spoken, can never be forgotten or forgiven. So, yeah, we'll see how I get along with that. Then in um, October, I'll be reading two books as well. So this is another one I've had for a while. Again, these are all thrifted. And this is Velva Jean Learns to Drive by Jennifer Niven. And this has just been sitting over there. I have eyeballed this a couple times, but haven't been able to actually get it on a TBR yet. So I'm excited to finally get it on. It says, one Sunday when she was 10 years, when she is 10 years old, Velva Jean Hart is saved. But being saved isn't anything like Velva Jean expected, and life soon brings devastating changes. Her father disappears on one of his adventures, and her loving mother becomes gravely ill. Before her mother dies, she urges Velva Jean to live out there in the great wide world. The only world Velva Jean knows is her home in the gold mining and moon shining town, mountains of the Appalachia. Her secret dream to become a big time singer in Nashville until she falls in love with Harley Bright, a handsome, truant turned revival preacher. As their tumultuous love story unfolds, Velvet Jean struggles to find happiness. Will it be as the demure wife Harley wants her to be? Beautifully written, this is an unforgettable story about love, spirit, and finding the courage to follow one's dreams. So, there we go. Then, let's see here. The other one I will be reading in October is What Elephants Know by Eric D Diner? Dinner? Dinnerstein? Or Dinerstein? Um, I love this cover. I found this at the thrift store the other day. So it's a recent one for me. And it says, and it had a little blurb by Jane Goodall. So I was like, <laughs> it must be good then. It says, abandoned in the jungle of Nepali's borderlands, two-year-old Nandu is found living under the protective watch of a pack of wild dogs. From his mysterious beginning, fate delivers him to the king's elephant stable, where he is raised by unlikely parents. The wise head of the stable, Suba Sahib, and Devi, Devi Kali, a fierce and affectionate female elephant. When the king's government threatens to close the stable, Nandu, now 12, searches for a way to save his family and community. A risky plan could be the answer, but to succeed, they'll need a great tusker. The future is in Nandu's hands as he sets out to find a bull elephant and bring him back to the borderlands. So, yeah, I'm really excited for this one. It definitely, I love anything like conservation day, um, nature aspect like absolutely love those types of books so I think I'm gonna really enjoy that one and then in November I will be reading the last three books hopefully like I said if all goes to plan um I will be reading the last three books and these all I found today like I said I just needed a Q, U, X, Y, and Z and so I was able to find all these at my used bookstore and I had some different options for Y and X. Um, X was hard, but I found a book called Mr. X, and I thought that's probably going to be the closest I get. And then I found this one, so I was like, okay, this one sounds more interesting than the Mr. X one. And then the other one I had found, um, what's his name? Dean Kuntz, a book that started with a Y. 
But I have a bunch of Dean Koontz books and I was like, I'd rather read those than get another one. Um, cause my sister gave me all those. And so I was like, I really don't want to add another book. I don't have that one that I found, but I didn't really want to add another one. So I did find another one that actually sounded more interesting and something that I'll probably end up loving. So fingers crossed I do. So anyway, first up, so these are all, like I said, going to be trying, I'm going to try to read in November. Um, so for X, I found XO by Jeffrey D Deaver or Daver, uh, Deaver, I think. Um, and yeah, this sounded more up my alley than the other one did. So it says country pop and genuine. Kaylee Towns' career is just reaching new heights with her huge hit single, Your Shadow, but fame is also bringing unwanted attention. An innocent exchange with a fan leads Kaylee into dangerous and terrifying realm of obsession. And when California Bureau of Investigation agent Catherine Dance intervenes on the singer's behalf, she draws the admirer's ominous attention to herself. Then a member of Kaylee's road crew is murdered in an eerie echo of her chart-topping song. As Catherine Dance races to stop the stalker with her considerable skills of investigation and body language analysis, she soon discovers that Kaylee has more than one frightening fan with a mission. Um, and it sounds like this is a series, it's a Catherine Dance novel, so it's this agent has, you know, the series is, regard, uh, is around this agent. But this one sounds really interesting, so... We'll see how I get along with that. And then this is one of the one I was really excited to find instead of having to just make do with what I I could try to grab. And this is called Year Zero by Jeff Long. Um, and it just sounds like something I'm going to absolutely love. So it says, in Jerusalem, an American archaeologist working on Project Year Zero, the search for the historical Jesus, crosses the line between science and theft when he helps plunder an old Roman landfill beneath the crucifixion grounds known as Goth Golgotha. Nathan Lee Swift's crime will have devastating consequences when an ancient relic is opened on the black market, a 2,000-year-old plague is unleashed, and the dying begins. As the pestilence threatens to wipe out humanity, he finds a chance for redemption by finding the cure. Skirting the edges of civilization, Nathan Lee sets out to find his younger daughter and travels to Los Alamos, where a desperate tactic has been adopted. The use of human lab rats cloned from Project Year Zero remains. Now Nathan Lee will come face to face with one special cloned human who may hold the key to and salvation in more ways than one. Patient Zero claims to remember who he is, and his name is Jesus Christ. So... We'll see how I get along with this. I'm hoping that it's done tastefully, um, but it just sounds like something I would really, really enjoy because I really like that kind of biblical aspect. Um, and so, yeah, I'm excited for that one. And then the last one I found, I had such a hard time finding a Z. I have a book, but it's one that I specifically bought because I was interested in it. Um, and I've already read it too, so it didn't really count. Uh, and so I really struggled and then I came across this one. So this is by Kay Hooper. I do have, I think like two Kay Hooper books, but I haven't read them at all. Um, they were one of those ones where, you know, you sign up and they send you books and such. So I haven't actually read any by her, but this is called Zach's Law. So, and it actually sounds like one I might enjoy. Uh, so it says when car trouble leaves are stranded, in a deserted corner of the Rockies, love is lasting on Teddy Tyler's mind. But there's no denying the attraction that grips her the minute she lays eyes on Zack Steele, a rugged security expert staking out a gang of gun runners in a remote mountain cabin. Zack has survived this long by adhering to a few simple principles. Travel light, travel fast, and travel alone. Now, to keep from blowing his cover, he must hold Teddy hostage for a week. If, that is, he can keep at bay his own simmering feelings for her. Teddy's not that easily confined, especially when her, man is in, her man's in danger. So when a simple surveillance job turns into a deadly game of cat and mouse, she must convince the original lone wolf to let her help, or see their chance at falling lo at love fall to prey to one of Zack's deadliest enemy. So, sounds like a romantic suspense, which I tend to typically enjoy, so... I was really happy to find that. Um, and that is the books 
I will be reading. And like I said, I'm really hoping I can do this challenge within the year as one of my goals for 2024. Um, and yeah, let me know if you've read any of these books, if you're interested in any of these books, if you do any sort of ABC challenge. And like I said, if you're interested in the rules I came up with um, that combines the ABC challenge with that thrifting element, those are linked down below. I'm going to go ahead and leave you guys here. Happy reading, everyone. Bye.